Today, we're gonna do joint locking with the body. So, in previous tapes, I've talked about how if you watch my hands, it doesn't help you all the time because hands are just a little part of the fight. Hands may make the lock go on, but without the legs, which we've covered, and the body, none of this works. So, I've covered the hands, I've covered the legs, now I'm gonna cover the body. The problem people have with joint locking is they're not in alignment. So what happens is, is they go to put the joint lock on and they move their hands, and then they move their body and it's not together. Or they move their body and then they move their hands. That doesn't work. What happens is, is you have to apply the lock until you feel tension. Once you feel tension, you add the body. The problem people have with this is they put on the tension, they apply the body, but then they let off the tension and they let slack happen and then it doesn't work. While you're using the body, if I only twist like this, and then I start using the body, as I'm using the body, I need to continue to twist. I can't twist and then use the body, because then there's slack. You have to twist in, use the body, and continue to twist while the body moves. So if I go like this, and I twist, and then I drop, nothing happens. If I go like this, and I drop, nothing happens. But if you watch, I'm gonna twist there. See his body move right there, and I can feel how his body's locked in place. Now I start to drop my core, my center, and as I drop my center, I need to keep twisting. I'm gonna keep doing this as I drop. And when you add all that body weight on top of the lock, that's when it works. But if you get yourself into a position where you're not using your weight on it, it doesn't work. You gotta remember that all your joint locking stays in a, basically in a little square, right here where your hands, by, by your solar plexus most of the time, right? That's what keeps your weight together. Everything moves in your center. If you get outside or you move like this, you don't have your weight attached to it anymore and they don't work. So every joint lock I do, generally, I'm in the center of my body. Whether it's this, or this, or this, or this, it doesn't matter. You see how it's in the center and then I use my body to drop on it. Never, ever, ever do I want it to move outside and then try to drop on it while I'm not in the center of my body. So remember, you wanna be in this little box and ideally what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you start the lock. So if I go like this, I put weight on it and I see him start to move, I need to move with it. What I don't want to do is I don't want him to move and I don't want to reach for this. It's a poor position. So I put it on, he starts to escape, it's fine, I put it on, I drop my weight and I'm in a good range for this to work. Because remember, all joint locks have a range, right? There's a structure that you have to have before you lose it. If he gets ahead of you, you'll lose it. If he gets inside you, you'll lose it. You need to move appropriately with him. Start using it a little bit put your body weight into it, and continue to go. And inevitably, as he moves, you're also gonna have to move your feet. So you maintain correct distance. If you take all the videos I do and you put them together, whether it's how to do the lock, how to use the feet, how to use the body, and then you start putting them all together in one motion, not feet, then body, then hands, you want all together. And when you do that, that's when these things start to work for you. It takes a while. As you first learn it, you're probably gonna learn one motion and the next motion and the next motion. But as you get better, your job is to shrink that so that it's almost one motion and it's very smooth. This is Bill Cloney for Straight Circle Martial Arts. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you again next time.